Hi, so welcome to the Electric Chain Data Logger demo. Uh, before we get into the main piece of the demo, I just want to run through a few things to get everybody on the same page. So why, what's this all about? What are we doing? So SolarCoin is an incentive which has been around for a while. It's a digital currency, a cryptocurrency, and it's awarded uh, free to anybody that uh, generates solar photovoltaic energy uh, at a rate of one megawatt hour for one solar coin. Um, SolarCoin could act easily as a ready-made rewards program for solar PV installers and OEMs to really create an economy between uh, solar owners and installers and OEMs. Uh, the SolarCoin blockchain is really cheap and lightweight. It doesn't uh, require a lot of resources to run like some others. Um, we'll be using a Raspberry Pi 3 uh, in the demo and the uh, the, the solar coin and data logger runs on that at extremely low resource requirements and it could easily be scaled down to much lighter weight IoT devices. Solar coin blockchain is robust in itself and it's very cheap to run in itself and, and by that I mean uh, you know it, it's fault tolerant there's uh, many nodes all over the world which um, are running the solar coin blockchain already as more people join the data gets replicated to more and more nodes and it becomes more and more secure and, and in terms of the cheapness to run well you're not storing data in a big data center somewhere with you know backup problems and all, all that kind of stuff it's really out there the people that are interested in the data are the ones that are hosting the data the electric chain data logger itself uh, is going to allow the exchange of detailed solar PV generation for solar coin itself so that's something that you're going to be able to start exchanging data for the reward and it really allows the connection of micro generation of energy to micro payments so that's quite a new space as well um, and really one of the things behind solar coin and electric chain is to benefit humanity we want more solar PV out there in the world and uh, we want open data and people to be able to use it. This can be tied to other things like weather stations and all that data can flow through the SolarCoin blockchain and be free and open for humanity to use. And here's just some of the information about the communities, places where you can find more about what's going on with SolarCoin and Electric Chain. And I'll add this at the end of the actual presentation. Hey everybody, welcome to the presentation. So the first thing uh, we want to talk about today before we get into data logger is actually the SolarCoin wallet itself and the SolarCoin network and how this works on our, our Windows machine, as you can see I've got here. It's a pretty nice outline of what we've got. We've got a wallet here with uh, 0.04 solar coins in it. It's a bunch of transactions that I've been messing around with. You can see we're in sync with the network, so we check in here we can see that we've got 1.67 million blocks nearly coming up to 1.68 and we've got nine connections to the network so we're going to use this as a way to see what's going on in our data logger uh, it's a nice easy format to see what's happening so this is on my windows machine right now so let's just jump over to vnc and just log into my raspberry pi which is on the lan here and just jump into there okay so now we've opened up we're actually logged into our Raspberry Pi at the same time on the same desktop and we're gonna jump in and, and see what's going on so before we actually go and look at the data logger I just want to take a look uh, at let's open a terminal let's just see what's going on with solar corn on here make sure it's working properly uh, because this is a daemon, we, there's no pretty interface. Uh, we really have to issue commands. But if we run get info, we can see that this appears to be running. We see it's got the same balance as we had in the other one. And we also see it's pretty much up to the same block height, just under 1.68 million blocks. And we've got eight connections on this node, and everything seems to be running nicely. So um, we can check in with that later, but that's all going well. So then let's have a look at our electric chain data logger. It's in our ELCC folder and we're going to be connecting to an M phase system. So 
uh, we need to look in our emphase uh, bucket and here's our data logger Python program so let's just launch that program let's just resize this window a little bit okay so the first thing it does is it challenges me for the SolarCoin wallet passphrase obviously we like to keep our coins secure so we have a passphrase on our encrypted wallet and you can see what's happened here is it's looked at our wallet balance and it's decided the amount we're going to send back to ourselves is lower than our wallet balance of course that's important and uh, amounts that you send back to yourself become important for fees and things like that so it's quite quite useful to have that piece in there so I'm I made some credentials earlier so that we didn't have to do a lot of, spend a lot of time uh, figuring everything out and typing it in so we've just entered our own solar coin address so that we send our coins back to ourselves because we don't want to be spending these sending them to somebody else and I've just skipped ahead slightly there to save you watching me uh, cut and paste a load of credentials into a screen so that's pretty boring so the last thing it asks us is, is inverter on your LAN so um, with Emphase you can access the the uh, Emphase system either through a web portal or through your local area network there's two APIs so we're, we're going to go through the through the LAN route so and I'm just going to input the IP address of the Emphase device on my LAN and then it's done some things. Wow, look at that. So this is the time now, and we started the data logger cycle. It's attempted to call the API on my local device. It's found that it's, it's logged the total amount of energy that I've produced on my system. And it's waiting for another 0.01 kilowatt hours, basically one watt hour to be generated. It's gonna check again in 86 seconds. Now, another thing to notice is that we've actually created a, a database file inside our thing here. And that's basically what that's done is that's saved all the credentials on our system so that we don't have to keep uh, tapping all that data in the first that we did the first time. So that's all in that's all saved now. We never have to do it again. So somebody asked me why 86 seconds. Well, there's 86,400 seconds in a day. So this is basically checking a thousand times a day on the uh, Emphase system to check for how much energy it's generated. We'd normally look for a lot more than one kilowatt hour. We'd normally be looking for 10 kilowatt hours because um, that's how that will set how quickly uh, our data logger actually logs to the network and one watt hour is a very small amount of energy. So we should see quite soon that this data logger is gonna call back to Emphase again and there we go so it's called back uh, it doesn't look like yet the uh, inverter has actually registered any more energy it is daytime the sun's out so we should see quite soon that we get some more energy okay so we've skipped forward again maybe like 40 or 50 seconds and we should just be waiting for our emphase system to generate some energy and then we'll be seeing that login onto the SolarCoin blockchain. And there we go. As you can see a few things have all happened at once there. But basically, it's made another API call. It's found a little bit more energy. If you can see that was 8.93731. It's now 8.50 at the end. It's checked our wallet balance again to make sure that we hadn't spent any coins in between and it's set the amount to send back to ourselves. Make sure we hadn't run out of funds. And then it initiates the solar coin and then it basically gives us this long number which is the block hash. Uh, if you're not sure what block hashes are, we'll look at those in the moment. And then, of course, it's going to wait another 86 seconds to see if there's any more energy uh, coming out of the system. So, what we also saw over here on our nice Windows wallet was something happened. You can see here that we've got a transaction. If we look in our transaction history, we can see that we made a payment to ourselves, And you can see that actually in here, if 
we look at this detail, we can start to see that all the information that we put in, remember that we put in our first session about our solar panels and everything else is, is all been put into th this transition. Uh, what we've also done is we've registered the total amount of megawatt hours that our system has made at that point in time. And you'll see that that 8.93085 is the same as that 8.93085 there. And we've actually logged the time in which that amount of energy was generated. So from 1435 to 1438. And again, it gives us that transaction ID number, which is the same as that long number there. So, well, that doesn't really prove anything, right? I mean, that's just shown that I've got two wallets linked together and one talks to the other. Um, so that's not really doing anything too fantastic. It doesn't really prove I've logged it to the blockchain. So let's just go and have a look at the SolarCoin Block Explorer. So this is out on the internet. And, you know, th this is a way to review what's going on with the blockchain. So let's just take that block hash number. We can copy that from there and we can paste it into this block explorer. Oh, and something's happened. Let's have a bit more of a look at what this is actually is all going on. So you can see now this is out on the internet and this is actually the same message, right? We can see all the information about our solar panels and our inverters and the size of our system. Um, and again, we can see the same amount of energy, 8.93085, and there's like time dates and times that we log that energy. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for a few more. I'm going to pause the presentation and wait for a few more logs to go into the uh, SolarCoin blockchain, and then we'll t come back and see what that looks like. Okay, so we're back, and as you can see from the... Uh, the terminal here, our Raspberry Pi terminal, that we've been doing some more login to the blockchain and some more data logger cycles looking for energy and that's still just been it's been running away, doing its own little thing in the background. And we can run this in the background, it doesn't need to be in the foreground like this all the time if we were using this in a real scenario. So yep, there's some more data getting logged as we as as I speak about it. So I said to you we'd have a look at a little bit more about what goes on here. And if we just um, if we just refresh this page and we do a search for this block hash again, we see that the uh, you know the page looks pretty much the same. Uh, but there's something really unusual about blockchains and what's really cool about them. You notice actually the block height's gone up now. It's, one, it's over 1.68 million blocks and this block happened 25 com confirmations ago that's roughly one block per minute so it's about 25 minutes ago that we looked at this so if we click on some of these not redeemed numbers these long numbers are quite hard to explain what they mean but this is basically our, our wallet address um, basically that was the address if you remember that we set back here right this is the one that we put in at the right at the beginning of the presentation to send our coins back to ourselves. so this is a record of everything that's happened on that address you can see some transactions coming in and out but if we look at all these different hashes you see this one we already looked at and this is the next one and you can start to see that the amount of megawatt hours that we generate in each one of these block hashes actually starts to increase slightly so this ends in 097 this next one adds in 8389311 this is 93135 so you can see that actually all the transactions on the blockchain are all linked together um, they they're immutably linked together as well this can't be changed because it's blockchain so it really gives you an idea of how you can start to build a time series of energy generation with a solar coin blockchain. Uh, so that's pretty much the end of presentation. Uh, we can just quickly go and look and see what's been happening. All the same records are also noted in our 
Windows wallet, which isn't a surprise from what we've seen so far. So thanks very much, and thanks for watching the presentation.